Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton show. 35 gone, three to go. Next up it's a first ever Premier League visit to Huddersfield Town's John Smith's Stadium. I'm at the library here of all places at USM Finch Farm alongside David Weir. Great to see you back at Finch Farm Peas and I'm sure you're glad to be back. It's nice to be back, I haven't been back for a few years so obviously a few changes but still a lot of things the same including yourself Dan. So, <laughs> <laughs> Some things never nice change. <laughs> always nice to come back yeah, and I'll see a few of the lads hopefully in a bit. What are you up to these days? I'm not working at the minute, I was at Forest and I left just at the turn of the year in January so I'm um, doing a master's degree at Manchester Metropolitan University and I'm doing a bit of really? recruitment yeah, for helping my club with recruitment as well so I'm busy, I've got four kids so I've got plenty going on but <laughs> I'm not full time in football unfortunately at the minute. Are you looking to get back into management coaching? Yeah definitely, I, w I definitely want to be involved in football and I enjoy coaching, I enjoy being around the lads, I enjoy you know, that side of it, being out in the grass and and trying to help and improve players, so that's what I enjoy doing, so just waiting hopefully for the right opportunity. It's such a precarious business though, isn't it? It is, and you know, you get used to that once you, you know, you stop playing and you become a coach or you become involved in the other side of the game, you realise how, you know, temporary it can be and how um, quickly it can go from doing well to, you know, to perceived as not being doing so well and, you know, things change very quickly in football now and there's no sort of um, longevity in any mm. sort of coaching positions, or especially at first team level. You were at Goodison Park on Monday night for the Newcastle game. Yeah. It was a, it was a hard earned win, wasn't it, for Everton? One that we needed. Yeah, and Newcastle are a tough team to play against. You know, they'd won four games on the bounce. They had a lot of confidence. They they've got some good players, and you know, a top manager and Rafa Benitez. So it's a difficult game to win, and you know, Everton found a way to win, which is really really important. It's you know, those games are difficult and. You know, the habit of winning is a good habit and Everton have, are settled now, you know, the back four's settled, the goalkeeper's settled and you can see the team starting to develop and I think there's definitely positive signs moving forward. Ian Snowden was alongside me in the commentary box as always. He made Phil Jagielka his man of the match. Would you go along with that? I would and I think, you know, Jags brings a lot to the team. He brings his experience, he brings his knowledge. I think he makes other players better as well round about him and I think, as I said, the back four settled now, Baines is back fit, which is great, Seamus is back fit, which is great, you know, and you're adding the young lads in and around them who have got, you know, the, the energy in their legs and I'm sure they'll be feeding off the experience that those lads bring, so I think I always found, you know, having a settled back four and good partnerships, you know, it goes a long way to, be, to helping your team to be successful. Well, it was a very good win against Newcastle, but one of the undoubted highlights of the night came before the game, when Everton Football Club had the world's first ever virtual mascot. This fantastic piece of film tells us more. Jack's a blue, so that this is his dream. To be a mascot of your club that you support is, is a huge thing. So him being able to do it is fabulous. Tonight uh, we have a first. It's the first ever virtual um, match day mascot. If you look, that is Jack, 14 year old Jack inside there, who will be controlling the mascot from home tonight. AV1 is a telepresence robot. Uh, it works like an avatar. So a child that is severely ill and has to stay in bed can control their robot from home and see everything, talk to their friends. Hello. <laughs> It's, it's quite huge seeing that little robot going out on the field, seeing Jack, it's, I have no words. Oh, I mean, Phil Jacks, when he, he come and he took him and he put him under his arm and we heard him saying, you know, let's go Jack, come on. And, and then he, he was showing him to all the crowd and introducing him to all the other players, all the other mascots. It was just, I did get a bit choked up because it was just amazing. And that is the virtual mascot experience that 14-year-old Jack McLinden will be now seeing at his home in Walton. It's a new technique and I believe it will really catch on. Seeing that, you can imagine Jack actually physically doing it and being there and that's somebody saying Jack is Jack and not Jack is the boy in the wheelchair or Jack the boy with the oxygen. Seeing Jack as a boy and that is just everything it was. Tonight has been absolutely fantastic, but it really has been an example of how technology can help a child like Jack 
be like another any other child, do something that he wants to do, but physically he's, he would be limited in doing that, but with the technology he's been able to get out there and be a mascot for the night and have a really fun time. It's fabulous, the, the effort and the time that yeah. everyone's put into it, it's been, it's been wonderful. This is a virtual mascot lads. Jack on the other end of the line live. He wants to finish off for the press conference and if you're listening Jack, well done for the 1-0 win mate. Thank you. We don't really see Jack as disabled or need an extra support. He's just Jack. And I think with school and with Well Child and now with this you know, isolation, he has been able to be Jack. Fabulous concept that, isn't it? I know it is. It's a, you know, it just ticks all the boxes. You know, obviously, there's a lot of kids out there who probably are unable to get to the game for, for unfortunate reasons, and I think it, it gives them a great opportunity experience in what you know otherwise they probably wouldn't be able to do. Everton consistently get things like that spot on. Everton in the community is a prime example. And no going back to when you were a player, you always like to get involved in Everton community projects. I think you know it's part of your role when you come to Everton. You realise that Everton is a community club. It's you know, the fans are based in Liverpool, the fans are, are locals and, you know, you, you soon get a sense of that when you come to the club and you've got to buy into it, I think. I think the players who have been successful here understand that and I think that goes a long way to, to actually, you know, bringing on field success as well. It's part and parcel of the club, you know, being involved in the community and being involved in, in the city, really. Well, one of the biggest days in the Everton in the community calendar is its annual golf day. This year's golf day took place at Formby Hall Golf Club last week. And here are a few highlights. Yeah, I used to love a game of golf and uh, having in the community do it right as well. We have one every year and it's, uh, it's absolutely fantastic. But today you cannot beat this. Everybody's looking forward to it. The course is in magnificent nick and uh, the weather, well, you can't get better than this. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's such a fantastic uh, initiative that, that Everton do. Um, we look at Everton, you know, as a club and we, we look at the first team. And, but when you when you look behind the scenes, the work that goes on and, what, and, and the hours and the, and the hard work that people put in, you know, you, you understand why when players come to the club, they feel such an affection and it's so hard to leave. And it's not just about the club, it's about the wider community. And, and, and Everton are very supportive in it. And that's why they've won so many awards. You know, you don't win awards unless you're doing great work. It's a fantastic charity. It's, um, it's still growing in stature. I remember when it was in its infancy. Uh, to see what it is today is, is magnificent and it does so much good in uh, not just in Merseyside, but even reaching out into the northwest at times. So um, it's it's easy to want to support it. Your old mate Leon Osman finished second in the individual awards. Dave, it's clearly benefiting his golf, having plenty of time on his hands. Yeah, I saw him at the game on Monday actually, so it was good to catch up with him. And he was talking about that he's getting a bit of golf in, and <laughs> it's obviously bearing fruit. But I'm sure he'd been disappointed not to be first. But um, I think he's getting plenty of practice, yeah. His media career is going well, isn't it? Yes, he he's doing well. He's good on the radio, which for obvious reasons <laughs> I think that helps. But he, yeah, he is. He's busy. He does a lot of Five Live stuff and he's got a good, he always has. He's had a, a good understanding of the game and a good interest in the game. And, you know, that's coming, coming to the fore. Kev Coban also doing a lot yeah. there and it's good to have a couple of Evertonians um, in and around the media. Leighton Baines reached a landmark recently when he played his 400th Premier League game for both Everton and Wigan. Some consistency, that isn't it? Yeah, as that's you know that doesn't happen by accident. You can tell, you know, Baines is a great professional. He puts a lot into it. You know, he's had longevity in his career at a real, really good level, both domestically and internationally. So, you know, that's a fantastic achievement. Never that Everton are lucky to have him. There's no doubt about that. He's he's a great player and he's a great lad. And you know, he's he's brought a lot to this club and to Wigan over the years. 
Well, that's just about it for part one of this week's programme. Don't go too far away because coming up after the break, plenty more from David Weir. We'll also hear from Idrissa Gay and we'll start the countdown to Saturday afternoon's visit to Huddersfield. Sorry, welcome back to part two. Just reading David Weir's autobiography there, <laughs> which is a good read. Thank you very did much. Did you enjoy putting it together? I did. Yeah, I must admit, I, I enjoyed it. It is time consuming, you know, you, but you do bring back a lot of memories and you, you challenge yourself. I'm not the best in remembering sort of small <laughs> details and games and things. So it's interesting when you go back and you actually, you know, remind yourself of some of the things you have done and the places you've been and it kind of jogs your memory a little bit. Yeah, so it was really good. I enjoyed it. Yours is a, a really good football story because you didn't take the conventional route into professional football, did you? Was that a, was that a conscious thing or did it just... Develop. I, I probably wasn't good enough at the time to take the conventional route, being honest. So, you know, I had to find another way of doing it. And my way was going to America. Um, four years scholarship, which was great, you know, both in terms of football and in terms of life in general. I grew up and I, I saw the world and I came back um, probably better prepared to play football. So I came back and then started my career. I was probably 22 years old at the time. and. First game was against Duncan Ferguson. First professional game was against Duncan <laughs> for Falkirk. Ferguson. For Falkirk against Dundee United. So every time I see him, it reminds me of that. <laughs> you must have played at a good standard in America. It was, yeah. I did well in America, actually. It was, all the Americans are athletic. The facilities are great, you know, so that really helped me. So I, I developed as a footballer over there and we played at the, the top level in college. And we got to the final four one year and, you know, we were a successful team and it was, it was a great experience. Got to travel all over the states and met a lot of good people and still keep in touch with, with many of them. I'm not overly familiar with the town of Falkirk, but it was a, a big culture shock, a bit of a culture shock to swap America after four years and come back and play for Falkirk? Yeah, well, I wasn't planning on playing for Falkirk, to be honest. I came back with a view to playing professionally. That was my plan. And I came back to my home to just to get a base and then go. And I was actually going to go to Leeds on trial to you know, hopefully get a contract there. But in the meantime, waiting for that trial, I went to train with Falkirk and um, I was there a week or so and they offered me a contract. So I had the decision to make. So I ended up deciding to sign the contract and um, stayed at Falkirk for three or four years and, and played a lot of games. And, you know, with hindsight, it was a great, great opportunity. And then you got a good move to Hearts of Midlothian. I did. I went through there. The manager who was at Falkirk moved on to Hearts, gave me the opportunity, Jim Jeffries, to go through there. and. I had a couple of years there as well, we won the cup, which was great. Um, Hearts hadn't won the cup for a long, long time and great memories of that. And it's actually 20 years this year since we won the cup. So there's a reunion plan for that. <laughs> Gary Naismith was in that team as well. So As a teenager. That's right, as a baby, yeah. So it'll be good to see all those lads again as well. And you know that's how football, time flies and mm. you know, 20 years ago, it's scary. Was it always part of your plan, Dave, to try your luck in the Premier League? Yeah, I always wanted to get down to England, as I said initially. You know, I was hoping to go to Leeds on trial and it never quite worked out. But as my career developed, I always had the, you know, one eye on England and the challenge that that brought. And I started to play for Scotland when I was at Hearts and playing against lads who were playing in England. You hear the stories of the grounds and who they're playing against and um, the things that are happening down in England. It was an exciting league and I'd been in Scotland for five, six years, so I probably needed a change. And it probably helped that Walter and Archie knew all about you anyway, even before they signed you. They knew what they were getting. I think so, yeah. I'd played against them, obviously, when they were at Rangers, and I knew them as well. I knew I was getting good people, and I knew I was getting um, people you could trust, and um, I was a Rangers fan as well, so to come down and work with um, Walter and Archie, who were Rangers legends, was a, was a great opportunity, but you know, Everton as a club was enough for me, but the fact that they were there was, was a big bonus. You talked to Everton straight away, didn't you? I did. I loved it. I was, I was excited at the prospect of coming down. I felt really lucky to to get the opportunity. I knew Everton were a, you know, a historically a massive club. I enjoyed the city, I loved the city, I still do. And um, it was a great fit for me. I think, you know, Scottish lads coming down to English clubs, I think that some clubs suit them better. And I think Everton was definitely one of those because of the, the nature of the club and the people that work here. Some exciting times, weren't there? There was, yeah, it was, at the start, it was difficult. You know, there was challenges in, in terms of staying in the league. So that was difficult and then Obviously, we started looking towards the, the other end of the league and had some you know, great experiences, some really good seasons and you know, a couple of adventures in Europe as well. So there was a lot going on and you know, with hindsight, eight years and probably close to 250 games, it was, um, it was a massive part of my career. 
I love talking to the 2004-05 lads about that season because we got some early momentum yeah. and just carried it on. We did, yeah. We, we kind of, we never were favourites really to finish where we finished. We were never really, everyone always thought we'd drop away and everyone, you know, kind of talked us down. So there was a real sort of solidarity amongst the group to prove people wrong and to, to try and achieve what we felt we could achieve and, you know, to finally get that place and to qualify for what we qualified for and finish above Liverpool was a, you know, that was a massive thing for the group and, you know, a, a great deal of satisfaction for everyone. I always like to recall the previous summer when we were in the process of losing Wayne Rooney and David Moyes really galvanised everybody that was left and that trip to Houston in Texas <coughs> was the start of it, wasn't it? That's what the lads tell me. Yeah, it was and, you know, we still talk about that now. You see, you know, you still bump into the lads who were on that trip and, you know, you just have these times when things fall into place and, there's obviously a little bit of luck involved, but you've got to give the manager great credit for organising that. And you know, we went over there. I've obviously had experience in America before. I know, you know how much it, you can enjoy it and how much is available there. And you know, we the facilities were fantastic. The social side of things were fantastic. The you know the lads really bonded as a group and got to know each other. And I think that was definitely the start of the success for that season. We saw Phil Jagielka walking out with a virtual mascot before. Something you never did, but I know you were. Fiercely proud to be the captain of Everton. I was. It was, you know, a great honour. Even now, you go back and, you know, the captain's table and you see your name up there, and it's, you know, the other names that are associated with Everton and being captain of clubs like that. And I've been fortunate to be captain of most clubs I've been at at some stage. So that that's always nice. But, you know, it's a great honour to, you know, captain Everton in the Premier League and successfully as well, which is important. You know, to be involved in some good results, some good games, and you know, and, and with some top, top players. Well, let's bring things right bang up to date. It's Huddersfield Town versus Everton at the John Smith Stadium on Saturday afternoon with his take on that one. Let's hear now from Idrissa Gay. It will be not easy for us because uh, we know our way. We don't have a good, uh, good record now. We just have to try and change, change it and we start maybe this weekend. David Wagner has done a great job there, but they're still not safe. Can that make this game even more difficult because they're desperate for the points? Of course, because uh, there's not a lot of game now, less, and uh, they will try to, to win this game. And we will try to win this game too, so it will be a hard, a hard game. We have to be prepared because we just play on Monday now, less, less day recovery. We have to. Uh, to be ready for this game and don't think it will be easy for, for them. For in terms of the, the end of the season, do you feel you have to have a strong end so that you can build for next season? If we, if we finish good this season, it will be uh, good for, for our mind and, like you say, to start building for the, for the next season. This, this season is not still finished. We have to uh, finish at the best way we can. So we know we have uh, not the season we 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 fourth. Now uh, football is like that. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's, sometimes you want something and you earn it. Sometimes not. So uh, this time we are we just have to finish good and hopefully that the next season will be better. For Huddersfield Town, their remit at the start of the season, I would imagine, was let's hang around. Let's make sure we're in the Premier League next season. Undoubtedly, you know that. I think any team coming into the Premier League and the teams this year have done well, you know, so far in order, you know, to be where they are. So their their remit undoubtedly will be to stay in the league, and they look like they've got a good chance of doing that. They've had some good results, haven't they? They have, yeah. They're, you know, it was the same last season. They really pulled some results out the bag in the Championship, and you know, they weren't really tipped to get up last season as well. So they've obviously got something. They've got a good manager. They've got a style of play. You know, they've got a, a good work ethic around them, so yeah, they've been successful and you've got to give them great credit for that. It'll be a tough game on Saturday, Everton's first Premier League visit to the John Smith Stadium and Everton's away form has been a, a wee bit patchy this season, just two wins, they will have expected more. Definitely and I think, you know, the manager's been very clear in terms of that's an area they need to improve and I think they have done, you know, recently, I think there's, there's shown signs of improvement and it's obviously an area they need to work on but um, there's been improvement in the league position, you know, the, the you forget how precarious it was, I think, when Sam mm -hmm. came in, how, how difficult it was and what, how you know, sort of worried everyone was at the time. So I think to be where Everton are now, you know, and there's still improvement there, I think everybody would agree with that, but you know, 
Everton are in a good position now. So what do you do now, then, Dave? Do you just have to wait for the phone to ring? Is that what happens when you, you want to get back into management? Yeah, I don't think you can wait for the phone to ring. I think you've got to get out and about. And I'm doing a master's degree I'm studying, which I'm really enjoying. I'm um, watching a lot of football. I'm, I'm helping a club with recruitment as well. So I'm busy. You know, I've got four kids as well who all play football. And <laughs> so I've got a lot of running around with them as well. So I'm not just sitting around waiting for the phone to ring. I'm trying to get busy and get out, meet people, you know, see what's going on and you know, and try and educate myself a little bit as well. Your boys played for Wigan's first team, hasn't he? He has, yeah. He was um, kind of dropped in at the first team in the Czech trade trophy, so he got a bit of publicity, which I wasn't really happy about because he was, <laughs> it was kind of, you know, a little bit ahead of his time. But he's doing well and he loves it and, you know, I'm, I'm happy with him. We wish him well. We wish you well too. It'll be full commentary with myself and Ian Snowden, by the way, from Huddersfield Town on Saturday afternoon. And if you still haven't had your fill of football by Sunday, Go to Prenton Park at 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoon and watch Liverpool ladies play Everton ladies in the Merseyside derby. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Do join us again in seven days' time for another Everton show. You've been watching the Everton show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe and that way you can catch every single future episode.